if it's a situation where you can exit this exit after it says go, pull over. I mean, that's the simple, easiest and safest thing to do. Just pull over. Because that, there, there will be times that you must take this call. Just pull over. As the campaign rotates over a five-month period, each month we will be adding more content. A PSA along with a few testimonials, and we go each rotation. It's an ongoing process like over like six months. I wanted to target male and female drivers between the ages of 16 to 65. People who currently text while driving, future drivers, young people who do not have licenses yet, but see adults texting while driving. So with that in mind, I developed a logo. I did designs for print ad, billboards, street signs, um, signposts, now awaiting government's approval. I wrote PSA treatments, I spoke to friends, I shared my ideas, I recruited talent, I scouted locations, and prepared props, and a whole other list of related activities to produce um, these PSAs. I mean, to tell you the truth, you get your vehicle to drive for more. Let's say, in my case, to take the kids to school. I treasure the half an hour that I may spend in the vehicle talking with the children. And I actually don't complain about the traffic jams. Because my attitude is if I if it's gonna be the traffic, I should leave a few minutes early and take my time. But at least I get to talk with my children. I get to listen to their music, which is not my kind of music by the way. But I'm forced to listen to their music, lyrics which I don't understand. I have to ask my eleven year old to translate for me. I get to know who their friends are. I get to know what are their likes and dislikes. I get to sometimes hear things from them that make me wonder if I picked up the wrong child from the hospital. <laughs> Fortune was in the living room, so I know. Um, you know, but you get to know these things about your own family that perhaps you won't get to know otherwise in those few minutes you spend together. But then the cell phone here is upon us, and, and it's a uh, I say in Barbados now, we're pretty much trying to do everything in a New York Minute style. And I really don't understand what the urgency is about all of these matters. If I am driving and my cell phone rings, I don't see why I have to be distracted in trying to answer it. It can go to voicemail and I clear it later. It can, if, you, if I don't answer, you can text and I clear the text when it's convenient. And my attitude is there's some little rules somewhat. But I am not the ambulance service, I am not the police force, I'm not the fire service, I'm not emergency personnel. And therefore, if you call my cell phone, anyone with cell phone will not involve emergency services, I don't see what is the urgency in answering the phone, unless you have one of these gadgets that can have the speaker connected through the uh, system, generally speaking. And then there are those who will want to drive and, and text which I really don't understand the, the necessity for it. I mean, what are you telling the person on the other end that can't wait a few minutes? I mean, if you are gonna tell your, your wife by texting as you drive, darling, I love you, we should have said it before you left home. <laughs> I know oftentimes people call and say, well, look, you know, I've been waiting here four or five, six hours, and I haven't seen a doctor. But obviously you haven't, you're not aware of the one so coming in in the back. Uh, by the ambulance in a critical condition, uh, perhaps going to that room, or uh, perhaps uh, necessitating the deployment of doctors and nurses uh, to quickly attest them. And that may very well, that accident victim may very well result in someone else not getting attention in a timely fashion. Uh, of course, the QEH continue to be challenged with, with bed capacity and greater utilization of them. And these accident victims, as I said at the very beginning, are taking up quite a bit of our uh, bed space and our time and resources in the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Um, our orthopedics department, I know that the doctors and staff in that department do try their best. Um, it is one department where the waiting time for, for uh, intervention sometimes can be rather long. But that is a, is a function as well as uh, respect to the number of accidents and incidences that we're having on our roads resulting in orthopedic surgery and orthopedic care being provided. And that is not cheap. I keep saying all the time that if the average accident victim um, or the individuals who cause accidents were to see the um, bill for 
the services being rendered and the hospital side alone, they were probably turn in a driver's license. But we have a duty to care to all. We cannot say that well, you've done something stupid and therefore we're not providing you the care. It is not our, our role at the hospital side or the public health side to uh, be the judge and jury over your conduct on the roadways per se. We have to treat you once you present yourselves to us. However, we believe firmly that the Ministry of Health must partner with initiatives like this and wish to publicly announce that you can consider the Ministry of Health to be a partner with you uh, in this endeavor. Because we firmly believe We firmly believe that um, in the post-crash victim side, we have a duty to share with the public exactly what's been happening on that end, so that we can better inform and influence what's happening on the driving end uh, in our society. And the Ministry of Health will continue to find initiatives like these to help get the message across as to the consequences of uh, one's failing to uh, act appropriately on our roadways and in all other endeavors. I mean, this is a hospital. We um, don't have all the details in terms of data in respect of the causes of accidents for whom victims present themselves at the accident emergency department. But suffice to say that last year, 2011, we had 1,701 individuals presenting themselves to a &E as a, as a result of accidents on our roads. Uh, we can't stand here and tell you what the cause of these accidents, as I said just now. But we know that that is perhaps 1,701 accidents too many. Um, and when you look at it, we have to ask ourselves, well, well, what does this mean out of the 40 odd thousand individuals to go to a &E, 1,700 are accident victims. But the truth of the matter is that many of these accident victims are the ones who end up uh, in intensive care. They have, they're the ones who end up taking up a lot of time and resources in the orthopedics department. And they're the ones who oftentimes result in long rehabilitation services being meted out to them. So they may very well be the ones who cause the bulk of the challenges uh, in our institu healthcare institutions. Now, I, I like to be very candid about these matters. Because when you are involved in a vehicle accident, uh, it means that invariably you have, therefore, to utilize the resources of the Royal Barbies Police Force. Um, and that perhaps results in somebody that's not getting attention elsewhere. You, uh, if it's a serious accident regarding uh, that necessitating the jaws of life or the raw or the barriers fire service, that too is another resource that we have to deploy. And certainly from the ambulance service side, um, that is also another resource that the state has to provide. Uh, certainly in terms of the ambulance service, we are currently doing responding to about 14,000 calls per year. Um, and this really places tremendous burdens on the ambulance service. We are in the process of buying new ambulances, uh, which is obviously we have to do. We are also in the process of working on decentralizing the ambulance service. Those, those initiatives we have to do in turn in respect of being able to respond in a timely fashion to all of our accidents on the road and all other incidents that occur in this society.